We've got a strange situation here. There's a mystery afoot, my dear Watson. In a previous video, I talked about the concept of attachment, how we study it, and what it means for the development of relationships between children and their caregivers. One of the most well-known research paradigms used to study the somewhat mysterious nature of babies' relationships with their caregivers early in life is called the Strange Situation Paradigm, developed by Mary Ainsworth in the 1960s. Here's the basic scenario. There are three main characters in this plot. A parent, usually the mother, but could be a father too. A baby, between the ages of about 12 and 18 months of age. And a stranger, an adult that the child and the parent do not know. To begin with, the parent and baby enter a playroom and are encouraged to play together. Then the stranger enters the room and interacts with the parent and the baby. The parent then leaves the baby in the room alone with the stranger, who tries to comfort the baby if the baby is upset. The parent then returns to the room, comforts the baby as necessary, and they return to playing together. But different babies react very differently during this scenario and leave us clues that give us information to sleuth out the nature of different babies' relationships with their parents. So, as with any good Sherlock Holmes mystery or research endeavor, we start by looking for clues in this strange situation. We must observe the circumstances, discern their essential elements, and then deduce what is going on. So what about baby number one? Initially, baby number one plays comfortably with the parent and explores the playroom freely, but still checks in with the parent every once in a while and engages with the parent in play. When the stranger comes in, the baby checks in with the parent to sense whether or not it is safe for the baby to interact with the stranger. The baby decides that since the parent is not afraid or concerned, that the stranger must not be a threat and begins to play a little with the stranger too. Then, when the parent leaves, the baby, startled at the departure, is upset and goes to the door to follow after the parent. The stranger stays there calmly and offers to provide comfort for the baby. The baby seeks some comfort from the stranger and eventually calms down a little, but never seems fully comfortable. When the parent returns, the reunion between the parent and baby is joyful. The baby runs to the parent to seek comfort, and the parent scoops up the baby and says some comforting words. The baby hugs and practically melts into the parent. Soon, they return to playing together. So, now we return to what is elementary, my dear Watson. When we look closer at these behaviors, what are their essential elements? Throughout this interaction, we see the baby freely explore the play area, regularly check in with the parent, express some wariness at the presence of the stranger, show reliance on the parent's emotional cues to sense whether the stranger is safe, exhibit distress at separation from the parent, seek comfort from the stranger, be joyful and relieved at being reunited with the parent, and seem comforted by the parent's presence. From these clues, we can deduce that the baby in this scenario trusts the parent as a source of comfort and support, and is deeply needed when the baby is uncertain or scared. But the key to this entire case is found in the reunion between the parent and the baby. The joyful relief in the loving reunion between the parent and baby in this scenario signals the strength and security of their bond. The baby feels safe and happy when the parent is near, and the parent seeks to provide the baby comfort and relief from distress. Indeed, these two have the markers of a secure attachment relationship. Now, let's see about baby number two. This baby enters with the parent, and then both appear generally lacking in enthusiasm to explore the playroom. They play a little, but more next to rather than with one another. The baby exhibits some wariness at the presence of the stranger, but seems equally interested in playing with the stranger as with the parent. When the parent leaves, the baby hardly seems to notice or care at being left alone with the stranger, but may show subtle signs of distress, like searching for the parent to try to figure out where the parent has gone. But when the parent returns a few minutes later, instead of jumping up and running to the parent asking to be held, the baby seems to hardly acknowledge the return, as if the parent's presence or absence matters very little. So, when we look closer at these behaviors, what are their essential elements? Throughout this interaction, we see the baby explore the playroom very little, engage very little with the parent, express some wariness of the stranger, play similarly with the stranger as with the parent, exhibit little outward distress during the parent's departure, and show limited joy and relief at the parent's return. 
From these clues, we can deduce that the baby shows a general avoidance and even a disinterest in exploration, engagement, and seeking comfort from the parent. And the key here in this case seems to also lie in the reunion. We note the baby's avoidance of the parent upon the return, almost out of anger at the parent having left in the first place. These are the hallmark behaviors of what we call an insecure avoidant attachment style. Now we turn to baby number three. Baby number three is an altogether different curiosity. Like baby number two, baby number three also lacks the drive to explore new surroundings, but exhibits the same wariness at the presence of the stranger. When the parent leaves, baby number three may seem distressed and may seek some comfort from the stranger, or may search for the parent. But when the parent returns, baby expresses outward anger toward the parent. The baby might go to the adult, but instead of settling in for a comforting hug, pulls away in anger and frustration. Or, instead of running to the parent to reunite in search of comfort, the baby might stay where they are on the floor and cry. So when we look closer at these behaviors, what are their essential elements? Throughout this interaction, we see the baby show limited exploration of the playroom, exhibit some wariness of the stranger, be distressed at the parent's departure, express anger at the parent's return, and seem unable or unwilling to receive comfort from the parent. So, from these clues, we can deduce that the baby in this scenario does not regularly seek the parent as a source of comfort, and may often feel abandoned and left to suffer alone. And again, the reunion tells the story of anger at being left instead of searching for joy and comfort upon reunion. Baby number three expresses what we call an insecure, ambivalent slash resistant pattern of attachment. Lastly, we have baby number four, perhaps the most curious and distressing case of all. Baby number four shows a non-coherent pattern of behavior that doesn't fit any of our previous scenarios. Most notably, when distressed, baby number four doesn't show any ability to effectively seek comfort from the parent or the stranger, and even expresses fear at the offers of comfort from either adult. The baby may seek help from the stranger when the parent leaves, or may curl up in a ball on the floor and cry alone. This baby shows a lack of awareness of the parent's departure, and then upon the parent's return, runs away and hides instead of running to the parent to seek comfort. When we look closer at these behaviors, what are their essential elements? Throughout this interaction, we see the baby express unusual and erratic behavior, be distressed at the parent's departure, show no coherent ability to cope or seek comfort, and express distress or even fear at the parent's return. From these clues, we can deduce that this baby expresses some highly unusual behaviors. By this age, we would expect the baby to be able to show some kind of strategy to help calm themselves down when they're upset or to seek comfort from an adult around them. Instead, we see very little coherence in how baby number four acts, and even when the parent returns, the baby may run and hide or shrink away in fear. These behaviors may even indicate some history of potential abuse or neglect on the part of the parent. Thus, baby number four expresses what we call an insecure, disorganized attachment pattern. Using our powers of observation and deduction, we have discovered four types of attachment patterns in this strange situation. These patterns are not the only ones that arise, and it should be noted that these experiments are done primarily with people from Western European cultural backgrounds. Over the many decades since the strange situation paradigm emerged, there have been many subsequent studies that have looked at different experiences, behaviors, and cultural backgrounds and their effects on attachment. But the bottom line remains the same. These interactions between parents and children early in life set the foundation for how children will trust and understand the world around them. Will it be a joyful or a scary place? Will children learn to trust or be fearful of others? But that, that, my dear Watson, is a mystery for another day. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up, as that helps us out a lot. And if you liked what you saw and would like to see more, you can hit that subscribe button. And if you click that little bell icon, you can get a notification every time we upload a video to the channel. And if you want to help this channel keep going and keep growing, you can always find us over on patreon.com slash developmentalenthusiast. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.